Chapman Island is probably one of the most majestic places on earth. If you're a skier, it's the ultimate destination for steep skiing and couloirs. Uh, coming up in the ski mountaineering scene, everybody I looked up to had some interaction with Baffin Island in their journey to be where they were. And I think every young mountaineer is asking themselves the question, how do I shorten the gap between me and the people that I look up to? You know, what do I have to do to be able to walk in their shoes? And when Brennan, who's always been a mentor to me, uh, proposed the idea of going to Baffin Island, I really felt like I was potentially arriving at something, that opportunity was finally going to meet preparation. When he said that the 50 crew may also be on our trip, then I knew this was a big moment, something that I was only going to get one chance in my lifetime to do in my career. Getting to Baffin Island is no easy feat. Uh, pretty much as soon as we arrived in Yellowknife, we started encountering problems. We had bags not showing up. Yeah, we got them. The amount of stress this freaking thing is giving me today. Finally have it in my hands. I think I'm just gonna sleep with it in my bed tonight. On our first day, we tried to fly. We had weather come in. We had to switch planes. It was really a disaster. I just had to kind of hold tight and hope for a miracle. All right, here's our day in Yellowknife. We are going climbing. There's Jeff making his way. Plan on it, but here we are. And our friend from the airport is here to hang out with us. Hi, how's it going? Mm -hmm. Is this your home gym here? Yeah, this is the only gym here, but... <laughs> this is the only gym in Yellowknife. Hell yeah. That makes sense. Well, sweet. That means we're doing the most classic climb in all of Yellowknife oh, right yeah. now. There it is. Yeah. 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 Nice. On the second day of trying to fly out, we got good weather and we finally made it out to Clyde River. Yeah, getting on the plane today. Woo. Right now. First chair. Oh yeah, first, first chair. chair. <laughs> Our plane took off on the last day we could realistically fly, which kind of made it feel like it was meant to be. Flying over the fjord, we saw all the terrain we were going to be skiing. It was like Yosemite Valley, but times a hundred. And Clyde River, well that might as well be the end of the world. Stepping out, it was so barren. It was hard to believe that anyone lived here full time. It took some weight off our shoulders getting to Clyde, but it wasn't a victory yet. We still had 60 miles of snowmobile travel with the Inuits to get to the terrain we were going to be skiing. So you may notice that I'm in ski clothes today. We are packing up and we are gonna get on our snowmobiles today and head out onto the ice. So, weather doesn't look like it's moved in too heavy. Should be in luck there, but it's an exciting day. We might be doing the last leg of the approach. So, this is crazy. Good morning. How's it going? Same crap, different day. Oh yeah. Good. <laughs> Love to hear it. I'm just fascinated by the setup here, so I'm gonna like check it out, get a little clip of it. Show me your uh, your fit here. What do you got going on? I'm very ready, but very, very, very ready to go. <laughs> yeah. You know? Oh my god, dude. Is it like sweaty in there? Like, how does it feel? I feel very warm. I bet. For the moment. Mm -hmm. I'm very, very warm. Feeling pretty marshmallowy. This is my first time testing out the overboots. Yeah. These are nice. Snowmobiling for 60 miles sounds easy. Until you find out it means spending six hours in a box, bouncing up and down. 
in and we need to surmount that hill figure out if it works you spend hours on these rolling bumpy arctic moraines once you cross into the sea ice it's a whole new world looks like this is where we're making home I think I'm finally done. I had to make V threads for each of these because the ice is so close. But here's the master V thread. We've got like four different things coming off of that. And Ryan crushes V threads just for Ryan. <laughs> Do my best. But yeah, time to start setting up the inside. The cook tent was our community space, our kitchen, our drying rack, oftentimes the source of our morale on the trip. Ah, okay. I'm gonna sneak behind you here. Yep. The tent and the sleeping bag is our life force in the Arctic. It's where we get our rest for the days ahead. How you feeling? Good, yourself? Wonderful. Yeah. Especially now that we can see all this. Yeah. Oh my god, this is beautiful. Leading up to the first ski of the expedition was this mix of excitement and tension. We'd worked so hard to get here. What if this was just another false start? You? You do? We made it, dude. Made it, buddy. All right, we're making our way up the Polar Star. Brennan's setting us a nice pace. But this thing is huge. These walls are just unlike anything I've ever seen before. Feels like we're entering like a, a dark fortress or something. And we're not even close to the top. Last pitch. Yeah. Oh man. Drop-in was totally surreal. I thought about that line for as long as I've been backcountry skiing, really. Spend so long thinking about these things, and then one day it's your turn. upper couloir, there was blue ice under the snow. With each turn, it felt like my edges were barely biting. I skied super cautiously, just trying to get from one edge to the next.
With each turn, it felt like the conditions just kept improving. Suddenly, I was going from ice to full-on powder. Once I got beneath the head wall, the turns that followed were some that I'll remember for the rest of my life. stories of the Baffin Coulars were true. We've been here for 24 hours and already skied a life-changing run. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so this is our water system right here. So we have this glacial ice that we're just breaking up with the tool. And we're melting that. You can melt snow, but we figured out that this is way more efficient because it just yields so much more water and we can just pick it up at the bottom of uh, the Polar Star anyway, so that's how it's going. Brennan, where are we heading today? We are going to look at what people have called the Ford Wall um, to assess some lines and we're going to take a look there. We have another idea to head further to a south facing zone if we don't like that, but we're just gonna go check it out, see what looks good, and make our assessments and go have a great day. Sounds like a plan. Yeah. Let's do it. Solid. Okay, so this is the scariest thing I've ever seen. There's polar bear tracks, and they're coming from right where our camp is. That thing was like 120 steps from where we were sleeping, and we had no idea. Lucky for us, polar bears like to stay low on the sea ice, meaning high in the couloirs was the safest place to be. For sure. I'm gonna say that we should do this. Yeah. Go. Cool. All right, we're at the top of the AC Cobra. It looks wicked. Jeff's about to give me a little ski belay while I test this little slope here. Yeah, right. Yep. All right, give me a little slack. I'm gonna go for a turn in a second. All right, I think I'm good to come off. Off oh, play.
Oh yeah. That was so good. All right, today we're doing a little bit of tent repair. So last night we had a crazy windstorm come through and it totally messed up the dome tent. So we're doing a bunch of V threads and redoing all of the anchors. We just repaired a pole that made this right here. How many uh, tents do you think you've repaired in your uh, in your lifetime? More than I care to admit, but the reality is, is these are crucial skills and experiences to have in order to keep yourself stable and be able to adapt to the situations in the mountains. So what we really had, I feel last night, was a bunch of people that again, in an unfortunate way, but also in a good way, have gone through this in the past and we all kind of knew what to do and it was just from sound asleep to mayday and just stabilized camp and now we're back to a, a good place after having poles literally snap in half which could be catastrophic so mm -hmm. i think we're doing all right yeah yeah this is my first exploded tent that i'm repairing <laughs> so and um, hopefully your last but i don't know but it can happen so i might as well learn this now this is what i'm here for is to learn from the best to have been in the field and been doing this so this is what we're doing that that we are, are we actually skinning. skinning today? This sounds a little crazy. First time skinning? I heard skinning is this wonderful activity that we should try as much as booting is also fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? I might as well use these pin bindings for something. Whatever conditions we had before the storm were now gone. The idea of going top down on the Model T was to be able to do blade ski cuts from above. How's it look from over there, Viv? The line was a lot bigger than we were expecting. Like, a lot bigger. We got to the top and busted out the rope. Vivian found a horn and built us an anchor. We got ready to send Cody in on ski belay. I like it. Bum. Seeing pro skiers be so diligent about risk management was really eye-opening to me. It was kind of comforting to know at times they were as nervous as I was. At the end of the day, we're all still human. No matter who we are, we're still susceptible to the same risks. Ten meters? Yeah. Like to the right or to the next one? I think Brian was thinking the one to the right. Okay. There's 
there was still one piece to the puzzle we hadn't figured out yet. And that was the crux. You can't see the constriction in the line from anywhere, except on top of it. I wasn't really sure what to expect. That's like a tunnel. Great. I'm a I'm getting to the tail wedge move. Never in a million years would I have guessed that this is how we would get through the line. Oh, my pitons fell off my harness. Look at that. <laughs> At today got some lasagna with meat sauce you have some mashed potatoes here which look great with kale and cheddar mm -hmm. mm. which I regretted turning down earlier but <laughs> I have other opportunities this trip like in a half hour <laughs> true enough although I think I want to save room for the quesadilla yeah. all right Today is a special day because I'm having my birthday on the ice. Yeah. And we're gonna celebrate by doing a little exploration. So pretty sure that that line is gonna curve to the right, but it could stop right there or there could be some sort of obstruction. Uh, either way, I saw this thing on the sled in and I just couldn't get out of my mind. I kinda just had to check it out. So that's what we're doing today. So, for the record, Ryan Adventure Day, and we're really fired up that it's his 22nd birthday. Oh yeah. 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 <laughs> so, it looks like my theory's panning out here because it makes almost a full 90 degree turn. And probably just keeps going and going. I bet it's way longer than it looks. The thing is freaking wide. This is gonna be cool. I was correct in my theory that it was way longer than it looked. It was also way more wind affected than it looked. Luckily I took notes from my years of skiing on Mount Washington. So I know how to use my edges on a line like that. So far it's super edgeable, just really chattery.
Yeah. Happy birthday, buddy. Thank you. I thought you were about to gap it on that next one. <laughs> you took that turn so decisively. I'm like, he's going for it. <laughs> nope. Oh, man. What a line. That was sick. That was fun. And it was fucking huge. Huge. Oh, my God. Big cool on the big fjord. On the back. Yes. Like, Stomp boom. it. Like there's a ugly bug under your heel. Just go high, bang. Andy was one of the most integral people on our trip. Without him, there was no bath and expeditions. So, teaching him how to ski was important to us. How do you like him? Good. Vivian, in addition to being a ski mountaineering badass, is also a really good ski instructor. Um, <laughs> Good. Another time. Straight. Watching how yeah. Andy smiled when he skated for the first time or glided Whoa. down his first hill, it reminded us of why we were all here. That pure feeling of moving downhill on skis. It was the reason we all knew each other. Yes. Boom. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Gearing up for the last tour of the trip here. As you can see, I'm a little bit colder than I usually am. But uh, it is the Arctic after all. We're gonna end with this guy right here. Hard to leave the Ford wall. We've skied just about everything there is to be skied on this wall. And really, the cup has just been super full this trip. We haven't had a single day that hasn't been really epic, so we're gonna end on a high note at the closest line to camp. My whole life, I've always felt like I was building to something big. This trip felt like the culmination of everything I've learned, all of the knowledge I've gained from the people who are willing to teach me. I'm grateful for the opportunity I got to put that knowledge to the test and prove I could hang in this environment. The idea that this was the last time I might see that view was a little bit sad. But after all the time we'd spent skiing lines I could have only imagined in a fantasy, I could only feel gratitude for the time we spent on Baffin Island. It truly was paradise on Earth. Packing up camp is always a bittersweet feeling. It was sad to leave behind our home on the ice, where we'd lived such a simple life of skiing couloirs, eating food, laughing and talking together. 
but it was time to go home. Our bodies were tired, and we craved showers, rest, and food that didn't come out of a bag. Before embarking on this expedition, I was expecting it to feel like an arrival. After completing it, I recognize it as more of a milestone in an ongoing journey. It was both a dream come true and a reminder that learning never stops. I don't know if I'll ever be as good as the pros, but after spending time with them in an environment this wild, I feel like I'm one step closer. <laughs>